Hello, Tirza. How are you today? Doing well. How about yourself? Doing great. Thank you. I really appreciate you taking time to chat with us. I know how busy you are, how busy you've been. And uh, I just love that that you're here to to tell us a little bit about your entrepreneurial journey as a woman. And uh, the show is super excited and very privileged to have you. So thank you for coming on board. Yeah, thank you for having me. Yeah, well, welcome, welcome. Would you do me a favor, Tisa? Would you just kind of introduce yourself a little bit to the audience? Tell us a little bit about you and, and you know, about the, the major projects that you work on? Sure, absolutely. So... My name is Tears of Love. I am a chef and caterer um, here in the Bay Area, uh, in the East Bay Area, so mm-hmm. the Oakland, San Francisco area. And I've been a chef for the past 11 years to wow. NBA players and Fortune 500 company owners. Mm-hmm. And during the pandemic, I had to make a pivot. Um, <laughs> and, you know, people are working from home and yeah. they're not in the office, they're not have catered events. Sure. They're not having private chefs. Certainly in not inviting people into their homes either, right? Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. So I started Soulbox, which mm-hmm. is a meal experience kit, and it features Black-owned and women-owned food artisans. Mm. Um, so I create uh, recipes utilizing their products, and in each box you get a cooking video, you get conversation cards, you get a DJ curated playlist, and oh, you I love get that. small wares to help you, you know, make make the recipe more beautiful. And the intention behind it is to not only support these small businesses and show Mm -hmm. that they're, you know, just as good as nationally known brands, but also to bring back the nostalgia of Sunday supper and just eating together, eating together, sharing a a meal, having a great conversation, having good music. Um, So yeah, it was very important to me that, you know, I, I bring people together around the yeah. table. Did you grow up in the, in the, in the Sunday dinner, Sunday supper tradition? I, um, I have, I, as, as I struggle in many areas, um, w- one of which is, uh, you know, I have the, this idea of something I want to write and, you know, like we're all struggling artists, right? Writers and podcasters and, you know, you're a television personality, but I, I do want to write something that is, um a remembrance of my sunday dinners at my grandmother's house so yeah. did you grow up in the tradition of, of sunday dinners as well absolutely yeah. so it was either with my immediate family you know my mom my stepdad and my siblings mm. or you know at holidays easters um yeah. we would go after church and go to my grandmother's house and we'd have big celebrations mm. um and there were games and we were kids and we were playing yeah. in the front yard jump right. rope and playing tag and then we would all circle in for prayer and you know just bless the moment and then we would eat and it's lovely you know, we would yeah. talk and we would laugh and it was just a very memorable experience we, we it sounds like similarly to you you know we had our our little friend group that we would see on Sundays at my grandparents which was obviously different from our friend group that we saw during the week you know in our, in our home um, but they, to your point, like we would be so excited to go outside and play with that friend group because you only saw them once a week or, or what have yeah. you. And in some ways you were closer to them, which was because it was more special, right. You know? Exactly. Yeah. And, um, in terms of, you mentioned obviously a big important part of soul box is the curation of black owned artisans of local artisans. What's kind of the process Tirza, that you go through to select the the artisans that you want to partner with? So I'm always looking for businesses. I go to, you know, little local markets. I Mm. go into stores. I'm looking online. I'm following people on Instagram. So I'm always searching for new products. Um, And then once I get my hands on them, I start recipe testing, Mm. you know, just really trying to figure out what I can make that's fresh and new and exciting with product sure um and then and i make sure they can scale you know because right. sometimes <laughs> I, I have large you know large orders large corporate orders or i'm sending out hundreds of boxes at a time and it's like how much of this can you get me and so a lot of the yeah. time what i'll do is i i have a warehouse so i'll 
you know, I'll buy a bunch of it so that when, you know, I'm ready to fill orders, I already have it on hand. Right. But yeah, I, I really look for businesses who are looking to grow and I'm a new business. Um, right. So, yeah. you know, like, do you want to grow together? You want to grow you with know? me? Let's, right. Yeah, let's, exactly. Let's hold each other's hands and like, you know, get to the top mm. together. So um, really, I'm just looking for people who want to be collaborative partners. That's fabulous. Did you grow up in the Bay Area? Is this is this like yeah. your yeah your home? Wow. I was born and raised here. Yeah. So you grew up in a very diverse and vibrant community, not just from a food perspective, but just from a socioeconomic perspective, from a cultural perspective. Does that does that kind of translate into into Soulbox? I would assume it must. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I have you know my cousins. I'm obviously African American, but I have mm -hmm. you know. Uh, Filipino cousins and cousins from Guam and wow. you know just like I have a Japanese aunt there's there's so <laughs> many multi I grew up with you know just a melting pot of different sure. friends and learning their cultures and learning their cooking techniques and even now to this day you know I'll I have neighbors and they're from different right. countries and right. it's like can I come over and cook with you like teach me your favorite recipe is is one of my favorite things to ask people because everyone has a cultural recipe that they right. just love to right. make. So I will know. never understand tears the, the the people and there are many of them that don't enjoy food, right? They just look at food as like it keeps me alive and that's you know it's an it's just a necessity. It keeps me alive and I only take it for the purposes of 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 nourishment. Um I love the cultural and the community and the familial as you know aspects of of eating together. Yeah. Um I, I imagine you you do as well. So I will never get folks that just kind of eat just to stay alive. <laughs> yes. right. Yeah, I've had a client like that before, actually. He's like, if I could get fed through a tube, I would eat that way. Yeah. And he's like, but I like the way you make food. So that <laughs> so I heard. Well. <laughs> um, so I've worked for caterers. I've worked uh, back of the house on the line. Uh, quickly realized none of that was for me. <laughs> Um, but did notice that a lot of folks who are, who train as chefs, aside from your tremendous amount of creativity, you are very entrepreneurial, right? Um, uh, I think as a breed. And did you find yourself even before Soulbox, have you always kind of thought of yourself as an entrepreneur, Tirsa? Oh, absolutely. I yeah. mean, I can remember being in sixth grade selling lollipops out of Love my it. backpack. I'm like, we're a markup, I hope for a, for yeah, a good markup. <laughs> absolutely. I buy them from Costco for like a box of them for $5 and sell them for a quarter each. And I had, nice. you know, $20 by the time I was done. So, you know, I've always had that entrepreneurial spirit. Right. Um, so yeah, that it, it comes natural. Sure. Did that exist within your family as well? Or were you kind of a little bit of the of the oddball there? Yeah, I think I would describe myself as the oddball. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you know, just trudging a new path, you yeah. know, like, okay, that's the way you guys did it. I'm going to try this thing. Try something a little bit differently. Yeah. 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 And, and was the support there for you, Tirsa, to do that? You know, a lot of the women that come on the show and and listen to the show sometimes don't have that support right so they they've had to go out and they've had to like hack that you know trail on their own um what was it like for you yeah i, I didn't really have much support honestly mm. yeah. um i was working in a corporate position mm -hmm. And I decided to quit and become a chef. And wow. my family was like, what are you doing? Like, you have a core <laughs> You have a core. Yeah. Like, so, oh, so let's stop on that for a second. So that's a common, you know, kind of thread we hear, right? Is I had the corporate job. I had the stability. I had the predictability, right? I had all of that. Although one yeah. could argue that corporate America is anything but stable and predictable, right? Because one day you're top of the food chain, literally, and the next day they're like, sorry, Tirsa, we don't need you anymore. Bye. Right. So sometimes, but people don't always rationalize that. So, so you were similar, you, you were in that corporate role and said, this is not for me. Yeah. I think what I realized is no matter what I did in mm -hmm. my positions, it was never enough to get you know, like, it's just, okay, you can get a raise, you can get a promotion, but what other fulfillment am I getting out of yeah, this? Right. And um, <laughs> it's funny, because, you know, I put my notice in, and it's like, 
no one ever called me, you know, they didn't right. really need me. I wasn't, right. a, I wasn't needed. And I want to always put myself in a position where what I'm doing is giving to people is like something they need. And I think yeah. feeding people, everyone eats, you know, I'll never be out of business. Right. Everyone no, has to eat something. no. And also like this career path, this sets me on fire. You know, yeah. I'm able to use my creativity, my brain. I love my, it. I have a fashion background. That's what I went to college for. Oh, and that's so, cool. You know, working at corporates, like I couldn't dress the way I wanted. I couldn't right. express myself in the way I wanted. Everyone has to be so buttoned up. And mm -hmm. now that I'm a chef, I can express myself on the plate. I can wear my hair how I want my makeup. You know, right. I can do I whatever it. I want right. and be my full embodied self sure. In, sure. in this career choice. That's it. so interesting. We we have another thing in common. My daughter graduated from fashion school uh, here in Boston. So we'll we'll do another we'll do another podcast about that sometime. <laughs> and and so obviously, you know, you you have found your way on to mainstream television. Kind of what was that? What was that journey like, Tirsa? Yeah. So the first show I was on, I'll tell you this. I got I was in Essence magazine. As oh, okay. Well. Yep. The seven dope chefs you should know. And from that article, paired with my Instagram, uh, TV producers, you know, are reaching, out. reaching out to you. Yeah. And so the first yeah. show I did was Guy's Grocery Games right. on Food Network. And I yeah. did that with my sister and my grandmother. And it wow. was such a good time. And we didn't win, but I realized, I was like, oh, I get how you do this. Like right. it was like an unlocking for me. Like so I cool. really understood how tv worked after that right and then i did beat bobby flay yep um and that was a really really fun experience going to new york and and then the great soul food cook-off also is actually filmed in the same place as beat bobby flay <laughs> um <laughs> but it was it, all of these shows like have just been such a wonderful like jumping off point to just yeah. create and showcase what i can do and what i'm capable of and that right you know, I have a personality. <laughs> well, and I have to, and, and so can you give me a little bit of a time or give us please, Tirsa, a little bit of a timeline about what time did, you mentioned obviously the pandemic, but when about did Soulbox kind of, uh, when was it launched? Oh, I launched it officially in 2021, December okay. 2021. And I prototyped it. I actually went through an accelerator program mm -hmm. um, to kind of, you know, going from a service-based business to a product-based business was actually a, more difficult than I had mm. anticipated. Mm -hmm. um, you know, learning logistics and back-end analytics and reading data and how to <laughs> promote. I so didn't different, right? So different. Yeah, I didn't yeah. have to do all that. I was like, I'm Chef Tirza. I can cater. I can private chef. Right. Here's right. I what can I'm knock doing. your socks off with my food, but now exactly. I got to run a business. <laughs> exactly. And so that part was a learning process. So I, mm. I officially launched it in 2021, mm. but it was like a prototype. So it started as a subscriber based um, thing that you get in your home. Nice. And I quickly learned like, oh, corporate people are buying this for team building. So I had okay. to kind of like alter my messaging and my, my platform and I've just been making small pivots, you know, throughout sure. the process and iterating and iterating until I find like a solid product market fit. And that sure. process has been fun. Honestly, it's been a lot of learning, a lot of networking, you know, going to all these VC summits and things like that, um, just trying to figure it all out. So have you been actively looking for investment Tirsa from the venture capital community or are you kind of not in that phase right now I guess I don't know that I want it mm -hmm. so sure. I explore it and I learn about it so that I can speak the language and have an sure. understanding and I can talk to fellow entrepreneurs about it because a lot there's a there's a gap in knowledge with regards right. to how it all works. Sure. And honestly, there's like three only three percent of women get VC funding. So it's, it's we talk about it on the show constantly because it is so mind boggling, right? Yeah. That there's such a low percentage of women who do achieve VC funding, despite the fact that it is very well known that only three percent of VC yeah. funding go towards, goes towards women. And I'm sure for women of color, it's even a smaller percentage. You know? Yeah, Black women in yeah. particular, we are the yeah. fastest growing entrepreneurs. Like we mm -hmm. are the most educated and right. the most like the most entrepreneurs. So right. it's like, 
why should, why aren't we we have the education yeah. and why isn't this happening well and and, and not for anything you're trendsetters you yeah. know um and 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 people are usually looking to you to to understand what the next thing is yeah. um as women you set the bar for what gets consumed from a consumer perspective right yeah. you know uh, absolutely so it is it is mind boggling for sure yeah so i don't know that i'm going to go the vc funding route sure. what has been helpful is grants Mm. I applied for a lot of grants. I've gotten awesome. about thirty thousand dollars so far in grant yes. funding, which has helped me. You know, I I used to think like, oh, thirty thousand dollars, so much money, but now <laughs> I'm like, wow, <laughs> wow. So I bought inventory. I built a website. I did right. Some I've got my all my tech, my infrastructure costs, and yeah, yeah. yeah. and I'm yep. like, I'm like, wow, I need some more money. I need some more money. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I, it, it takes about a good $150,000 to get a business off the ground, right, you know, like right. to get it up and running and, you know, people need working capital sure, and all, sure. all types of things. Cause you know, yep. when yep. you're, yeah. So that's, those are the it's things amazing. I like learning and talking to my fellow entrepreneurs about. I, I love that. And, and, and again, so again, thank you for coming here and talking to us. So, so the, the entrepreneurs listening to this can, can, can learn from you. Um, so just as uh, right before you and I kind of went on air, I was saying, I, I was taking a look at the whirlwind of activities you've been involved in lately and just inspired by that. Right. So you've got this energetic involvement in a hugely diverse group of events. You're in, you're at healthcare conferences, you're participating in culinary challenges. You're now part of the target pro bono accelerator program. H how do you, you know, how do you, how do you do that? How do you do that, Tirza? What drives you there? So there's a, a few values that I live by, and it's mm -hmm. creativity mm -hmm. and community mm -hmm. and cuisine. So if Ooh. if those three, yeah. three things are in yeah. alignment, so with regards to community, that's when I'm going to, you know, the walk and talk series or that I'm supporting fellow entrepreneurs right. in, in my community. When I go to the conferences and things, that's supporting my create my creativity because I'm making connections and I'm right. networking and I'm it's like sparking ideas within right. me. And then anything that has food attached to it, I'm I'm going. You're there. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> where well, you know where I can learn to taste something new or learn to make something new or you know just. So those are the the three, you know, values that I kind of just am energized by. So sure. when I'm asked to go to these things or invited to these things. I'm like, does it align with these values? You need to trademark that to yourself for yourself. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, I love that that notion. And, you know, you really strive to create these sort of standout moments, right? Um, they're, they're beautiful. Uh, and, and a lot, I think a lot of the recognition that you have received has been around this notion of standout moments right uh both both personally professionally again you know you how do you blend all that you're together it's it's got to be truly challenging for you is it just continue to live by that 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 three-point credo um well so i was actually it's funny you say that i was just awarded or recognized by sham board and black yes. as a moment yeah. maker yeah um and i thought i was like wow that's actually so fitting. Yep. Um, it is my intention to create community mm -hmm. and keep that community together um, by through food, you know? Mm -hmm. So when I'm, I, I have a, a soul box supper club actually is attached to. Soul I did box. want to ask you about the supper club. Yeah, yeah. And so yeah. I can't believe we didn't start there because soul box <laughs> supper club is, is my third iteration of, uh, essentially a pop-up that I've created. So sure. I started with a beat at the table, um, which was a five course dining experience I did with my cousin, who's a DJ and she would curate a soundtrack to my menu. Mm. And I loved that event because it was small and intimate and sure. I would serve these beautiful plates and people would just have a great time. And I'm like, okay, this is community. Like it's giving that feeling that I had growing up. Mm -hmm. And then um, I had a restaurant for a, a little while and then I yeah, I was going to ask you that if you ever, if you ever kind of delved into the restaurant uh, proprietorship space. I did, space. yeah. yeah. I quickly learned it just wasn't for me. Sure. Um, I'm more like I need to move, you know, mm. and so being in one place, it just wasn't suitable for me. Sure. 
Um, and so I started a supper club in my home called Tuesdays with Tirza. And I just had a simple call to action. I said, you know, on Facebook, I said, hey, community, if you're feeling sad or lonely during the holidays, if you're looking for community, you I can come it. to my house on Tuesdays. My wow. door is open. I will feed you. Wow. And people started showing up at my door. That's and that's I, so brave. I just want to stop on that for you. That is such a brave thing to do. Is that where do you think that came from? Was that instilled in you as a child to 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 kind of open your door to and create community like that? That I, I'm fascinated by what you just said. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah. I after fashion school, I went to pastoral school and oh. said theology. Okay. And so my faith is let's open open the door. Open the you door. Know? Yeah. People need love. People yeah. need community. They need a listening ear. They mm -hmm. need a safe place to be vulnerable. And I truly believe that food is the great connector. I do too. And yeah. So when you sit people down with, a, you know, something comforting to eat, then they're going to open up to you mm -hmm. and they're going to share with you. And then, and then I can be what I naturally am is just a loving person. person. Yeah. Yeah. And just so, a lovely person. Yeah. Yeah. And so when I put that call out, it was just like, I, I want to love on people. It's my sure. nature to feed people and it's my nature to love on people. And so what, what an honor and a privilege that people showed up. I love speaking with chefs like yourself, just because of the, 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 the aspect of the servitude, right? Tirza and, and just the notion of like, you derive so much joy from making other people happy. Um, yeah. And I, it, this is a common thread you see. Um, it's really impressive to see that because there are many people who do not thrive by making others happy. They actually <laughs> thrive by making others unhappy. Right. So, yeah. so, so good on you for, for all of that. Um, I, I appreciate that. Let's talk a little bit about you also find time to give back in what you're doing. You are a mentor for the ladybug house, which is the, the cutest name I've ever heard ever. So uh, I, can you talk a little bit about what you do with young teenage women? Yeah, um, Ladybug House was founded by a woman here in the Bay Area named Tasha Dial during the pandemic, and she mm. wanted to just create um, a safe space for teenage girls and connect them with women in the community who, mm. you know, are reputable and honorable women. And she asked me to to be a part of it and be a mentor. And so actually, just last weekend, we had a workshop um, and I led um, my topic of discussion was relationships and conflict resolution. Oh, that's a good one. It yeah. was great. It was really yeah. great. So there was four groups of six teenage girls, teenage young women, and they came and they sat with me and I kind of led them through a breathing exercise and asked mm. them to recall just a moment where they were in conflict with someone and, you know, talk to me about how they handled it. Yeah. And then, you know, we talked about how could you have handled it better or differently? Sure. And what tools and tips can you do moving forward? So there's like summits like that. And then I yeah. also have a mentee. Oh, um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Who I do one-on-one -on -one mentorship with um, through the ladybug house. And, you know, I'm just a person she can, she can text or call sure, or when she needs to. to talk to someone. Yeah, right? I'm yeah. Like, Let's yeah. go for a walk. Let's grab some sure. coffee, whatever it is. It's important for teenagers to have, oh, my goodness. I have a 16 year old. So oh, a I love you. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, it's, it's important for them. He calls yeah. on one of my best friends often, you know, and yeah. um, she'll just be like, Oh yeah, I talk. I'm like, Oh, you talk to my son. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and it's hard, right? Because it's sometimes you can't sometimes always talk to your, your mom or your dad or that parental figure in your life, but you will open up to even just the best friend of, of your mom. Right. Yeah, uh, yeah. absolutely. My mom yeah. worked for the County and we actually growing up, we had a youth group in our home. Mm focused on um uh it was called sex aids and youth so during hmm. the AIDS epidemic during the age epidemic yeah sure. yeah so she educated teenagers on just how to be safe and protect themselves and we they met in our house twice a week and so i just always saw my mom giving back to community yeah. and like encouraging and uplifting and i want to sure. you know i want that to be part of my legacy as well i yeah, want yeah. my children to see me so that they have you know, a spirit of generosity and a spirit of community as they it's as outstanding. They, yeah. 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 What kind of things is your child into? Oh, he's, he likes punk music. And oh, that's skate awesome. And, yeah. yeah. That's rad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's really cool. Bikini yeah. He's an amazing artist. He yeah. plays the guitar. So. Oh, that's so cool. 
That's yeah. awesome. I'm sure a lot of that creativity is is purely stemming from you. That's 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 amazing. Yeah. Tears up. There's this kind of concept of like, you know, in entrepreneurship, like we have talked about a little earlier on, it can be a very lonely journey, right? Talked about support. We talked about people being there for you when you kind of start off. You're giving a lot of support through to 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 women, you know, teenage women through Ladybug and some of your, your mentees. Um, do you do you today have a have a posse have have folks that 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 you're you know fortunate enough to that, to be surrounded by that are helping to keep you lifted up? Oh, absolutely! Mm. I have phenomenal friends first mm. of all who you know, not only refer me or listen to me or offer advice, but I also have, yeah. there's so the Bay area is like a hub of entrepreneurs. Well, sure. Yes. I, yes. I can go to yeah. the coffee shop right now and run into 20 people I know who are, you know, taking meetings and, and we doing get something together. entrepreneurial. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And we get yeah. together and we, you're talk. part of that community. Yeah, absolutely. And just mm. networking and, and giving what I love the most about the Bay area is like, you always know someone who can fill the gap. Degree. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And yeah. and you're happy to recommend these people. And mm. so I've, I've been blessed to just be recommended through sure. for so many things like, Oh, you know, I I'm speaking on a panel in a couple of weeks. I'm like, how did you find me? Oh, such and such recommended you. Mm. And I'm like, Oh, great. Like, Oh, great. All these degrees of separation. Yeah. You know, you mentioned a very important thing there too, about gaps, right. And having sort of, the um self-awareness to see when you have a gap or you know when you need help and put your hand up for help and some folks are better than that than others right where yeah. where have you kind of um found your way as it pertains to it sounds like maybe through this amazing community that you're a part of but was that a journey for you too of that kind of self-awareness and seeing your gaps I'm, I'm, I'm big on self-reflection. I'm big mm. on how can I have done this better? Like, um, you know, there's a little bit of perfectionism there, but, yeah. you know, I've always like, okay, that was good. You know, even to my last supper club, um, it was great. It was, right. everyone was like, and, and, you know, I tell one of my business partners, I'm like, you know, I'm like, what? what could we have done better? And she's like, are you kidding? Can we just celebrate? Like, <laughs> and she's like, we are not doing like roses and thorns right now. There were no thorns. I love roses oh, and thorns. Roses. Oh my God. I'm a big <laughs> retrospective person, right? So yeah. I drive people on my teams crazy because I'm always like, great, let's do a retrospective, right? Yeah. Uh, sounds like, uh, you know, you're the same way a little bit. Yeah, yeah. I'm always yeah. just yeah. trying. I'm a, I'm a lifelong learner, you yeah. know? I'm yeah always in accelerator programs or reading something or sure. whether it's a recipe book or a business book. I'm always just trying to expand my mind awesome. um, to learn something new. Yeah. Well, and I think that's reflected in the diversity of things that you're involved in too, right? I mean, those you, I, I would assume so many of those are significant learning opportunities for you too, right? Um, as well. You, um, you mentioned a little bit earlier, um, kind of how soul box was born in the soul box supper club there's a lot of competition in this space right um I, i'm not going to mention any names but there's there is a lot of competition here uh especially for a lot of the sort of like ready to prepare on your own guided right yeah. and then there's also these machines they sell you with <laughs> with with food you just drop into the machine and and cook with your phone it looks like um yeah. You know, you're you're definitely setting yourself apart through high, how highly curated everything you're doing is. But um, does it scare you that 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 there's a lot of bigger names out there, or um, or you does that fuel you? I guess I've done a lot of research mm. um, before I started Soulbox on you know comp I've done competitive analysis, and sure. what I know for sure is that there is enough for everyone nice there yeah. is in the world right? right so these brands yes they can show up on their door faster quicker but you are not getting a soulful mm. curated experience yes these yes. are not promoted to create bonding right they're just they're just serving one 
use case, which is put food in your belly done. Right. Exactly. Yeah. But yeah. I'm, I, that's not what I'm selling. Right. I'm selling, like, if you come to a soul box supper club, you get mm. the experience and then you're able to purchase a soul box. And it's like, now go home and have the same exact experience that you loved so much. Go On have your it own. with your family and friends. Yeah. yeah. I, my product is to create a revolution of let's sit down again. Let's sure. stop being in a rush. Let's be eye to eye and, and listen to each other and get vulnerable mm. and let's do it over this good meal with this really good music, music playing. good music playing. Yeah. Well, and it's so interesting too, because however you define your family unit, right? Whatever that is, yeah. traditional, non-traditional, there's so much data and evidence around, you know, the family that kind of sits and eats together and has that moment of communication usually just has a, a their relationship is just so much for lack of a better word tears i'll just call it better right yeah. than then if i'm eating myself and then my partner's eating by themselves and my child's eating by their self and we're all running in different places and we're not coming together you know i i appreciate families however they're defined that yeah. take the time to try to gather around at least one meal a day together right yeah. and and you know uh We'll we'll play that game sometimes, like tell me three great things that happened to you today, right? Or something to that effect. Yeah. Right? Um, yeah. yeah. Um it's super important. And yeah. you know, like eating dinner and or any meal in front of your phone or the TV, your body actually can't tell you when it's full. You know, so yeah. you keep eating or right. or you're just doing something mindlessly right. and it eating is really an intentional activity, right? You know, you're putting nutrients into your Shouldn't body. be a mindless activity. Right. You don't just activity. work out, yeah. you know, yeah. it's the same type of notion. You wouldn't just right. mindlessly work out. So you shouldn't be mindlessly eating. Eating. Yeah, sure. And Absolutely. you should enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Talk to us a little bit about what you're excited for in this year. Uh, so there's, uh, you know, again, you've had a whirlwind of stuff that you've already done the first three months of this year. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned some accelerator programs, other things, but kind of what are you, what are you really excited about, Tirza, as we continue on and 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 uh, and and march forward into the rest of 2024? Well, first, I'm excited. I'm leaving for Japan tomorrow. Oh, wow. Well, even better, <laughs> even more. Thank you for talking to us because I'm sure you have a million things to do to get ready yes, for I that. Do. That that. My that. I'm excited to like eat and research and yeah. like find new inspiration for sure. my own recipes. So that's is this one. a trip for that purpose? Is this a just trip yes. of discovery? Eating and discovering. Lovely, I love it. I'm very jealous. I've I, I've always wanted to go to Japan. Haven't made it, but would always wanted to go. Yeah, first um, time. Well, it's my first time. Yes. Wow. Yeah. So excited to do that. Um. And just expand the Soul Box Supper Club. Mm -hmm. I think once more people understand through the Supper Club what Soul Box is, then sure. Soul Box will grow. Mm. And so expanding that to, you know, we usually do it here in Oakland. Our next one will be in San Francisco. Then we're moving um, to, pa we're going to Paso Roble. Oh, so cool. that'll, yeah, we'll, we're doing one there. And then we're just planning to like Atlanta, New York and just moving it all around because if we can create these micro communities of people who dine together, yeah. then we're creating this around the globe of like, this is important. Focus on this, you know, focus on being together and creating community. So I'm excited to grow the supper club and in turn grow soul box, mm. um, just reaching new, new markets, um, with it. And, um, just traveling, you know, even I want to take it. I want to take it everywhere. Start a I love it. Please come to Boston. We've got a great, <laughs> as you may know, we, we've got a great culinary scene here. It's very diverse. It's, yeah. you know, uh, it's, it's an interesting scene here because in some ways it's highly, highly traditional because Boston is an old city with a lot of tradition, but there mm -hmm. are some really new uh, culinary experiences here now that are shattering some of the old paradigms, which is really fun. Right. And and you really yeah. want to see that. I, I want to see that. I like to shake things up. So personally, okay. um, so please come to please come to Boston. <laughs> yeah. um, I, I just I, I I'm just amazed at the uniqueness of what you are doing. Right. And and using Soulbox Supper Club as the catalyst and the showcase 
And then that is your marketing for Soulbox as a as a service. It's such a unique approach um, and so personal. Uh, so yeah. I, I think that's fabulous. Really do. Yeah. Yeah. I think if we're always walking in our own authenticity and just doing sure. things that feel natural to us, things right. that excite us, you know, then the business will grow. Right. And what I know for sure is like, you don't have to grow at anyone else's rate, but your own. And right. so when I started Soulbox, I was like all gung ho to like, get it to be this big company. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, now I'm not enjoying it. Yeah, <laughs> you know, right. I, I didn't start that for this. And right. so scaling back and being like, well, how can I grow it organically and create community? Because that's the purpose of it. Right. Of course, you know, everyone wants to make money, of course, of course. But the purpose of it is to create community and to teach people that centering you know, loved ones and those moments and sharing just a moment of joy with people like that is important right. to the landscape of your life, you know? Right. right. Absolutely. Yeah. So I'm going to ask you the the dreaded question that all entrepreneurs hate when I ask them this, because most of the time it's, they have so many examples, but where's the example of your failure and how you sort of dealt with it? and moved past it. And maybe you don't have to give us, maybe you don't have to speak specifically about one instance, but just maybe your mindset around kind of dusting yourself off and picking yourself back up when, when something doesn't go right. Oh, my whole life is an example. <laughs> but to be honest, I mean, I was a teen mom, you know, like yeah. I have, I have an older son that I had, you know, when I was okay. in college. And so like my whole life has been just failing forward and failing mm. fast. Yeah. Um, and let's think of a good example. I mean, I guess early on with Soulbox, I can tell you before I like named it and, mm. and created a business around it during the pandemic, a production company I was working with, they're the ones who actually were like, I was teaching just cooking classes and they okay. were like, can you send the milk kit with it? And I'm like, absolutely. Had no idea what I was doing. Didn't right. know what I was talking about i'm like sure i said yes and then i'm like scrambling like getting boxes getting ingredients <laughs> we all you never want to say no right you always want to say exactly yes, so, because yeah. they're offering you know a pretty yeah. penny and i'm like yeah. yeah i can do this had no cost analysis i didn't know mm. how much it was going to cost i didn't know how to ship things mm. I, I did nothing i didn't know what like like anything and when the boxes got to them they were destroyed oh no they were absolutely destroyed i oh, mean no. i was pomegranate arrows and then cilantro was like withered away oh it was, yeah it was just a bad right bad i understand yeah yeah so you, you was, think about how those how the how the packaging needed to be and yeah oh yeah okay. sure yeah so it was very yeah. embarrassing and, and and i was like okay if i do this again ever mm. then i'm gonna have to figure it all out i gotta like basically Graciously, they asked me to do it again <laughs> <laughs> and well, i was like Okay, learned my okay. lesson lesson once. Let me figure this thing out properly. And so that, you know, that was definitely a, a failure, but I learned really quickly, like, okay, mm. that was a mess up. I can't send this. And that's why Soulbox is based in minimally perishable ingredients. I don't right. I don't I'm not sending any pomegranate arrows. Right. Again. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would assume too, you you're there's a probably a a concept of ecological consciousness too, where if you're sending minish, minimally perishable ingredients, you don't have to do dry ice or right. styrofoam or other things, right? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And even so like someone posted a TikTok one time and they put that uh, music, it goes, oh no, oh no, oh no, no. <laughs> and she's like opening her box and it's destroyed. Aww. And I swear the UPS plays football with these things sometimes. Yeah, sometimes you think they do. Yep. Like, yeah. how does this happen? How does some box arrive perfect? And then yeah. another one just completely destroyed. But mm. even in that, I said, I said, you know, here's a refund. I'm so sure. sorry. You know, like, is there anything else I can do? And she was like, you know, because you're so gracious, I'll take the TikTok down. Wow. <laughs> like, that was sweet. Yeah, that was nice. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. thank yeah. you. Yeah. Well, you certainly tried to make it right, too. So, yeah. you know, it's good that, that that person recognized that you were making it right and didn't decide to just continue to... uh you know, because the internet is so unhinged, as we know, right? So, yeah. yeah, and you know, we could all stand to be a little bit have some humility. Absolutely, you know? humility That's is, perfect. I think, 
one of the things I, I admire most about entrepreneurs like yourself is that sense of like self-awareness and humility and humbleness that you just don't see, I think, across the yeah. board sometimes, right? Yeah. So that's that's amazing. Conversely, Tirza, when you think, you know, when you kind of close your eyes at night and you think about what are your measures of success and how you know your, is it, is it a feeling for you? Are there examples that kind of point to how you know you're being successful or talk a little bit about how, how you measure that, Tirza? I think I measure success through my kids' opinions of me. <laughs> Why not? Um, yeah. Uh, you know, recently my, my youngest son, he was, he says, he was like, you know, I don't want to be an adult. All you guys do is complain and you're tired all the time. And he's just, and I go, he's not wrong. <laughs> I know, I know. So I was like, okay. And then he goes, I don't even really know anyone who's successful as an adult other than you. Wow. And I go, That's a pretty go, impressive thing to say. Yeah. I was like, oh, you think I'm successful? I'm successful? And like, yeah. yeah. And he was like, absolutely. And I was wow. like, I was like, oh, you do. Because. <laughs> I, you know, I, I guess my pinnacle of success is just living a life of ease and softness, yeah. and having things like automated so I can like continue to live Get through in my, my day. Yeah. Yeah. Cause yeah. when I'm tired and burnt out, I can't serve my community in the way that right. my heart desires to, sure. or when sure. I'm worried about bills or how this thing's going to get done or that thing. So I think success for me is just living a life of ease. Mm. And, and and just being able to help in my community you know if i'm not helping the world be a little bit better then what right. are we really doing here what are we doing? You know? yeah absolutely um, so i think that's a measure of success of course i want to be a quadrillionaire but not for selfish reasons you right. know money helps systems you know money well helps. i mean look you know money money is is a, is a very necessary evil and like i just like what you just said it helps systems and I suspect that, you know, when you reach quadrillionaire status, which I'm confident you will, so much of that will be brought back into your community. So, yeah, yeah, absolutely. 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 I don't think we need to hoard money. Like <laughs> yeah. Well, and you, and you said earlier, too, in, in our conversation that there's like enough business for everyone. Right. Yeah. And I, I feel the same way. I love competition. I love when even my competitors succeed because you know, look, I, I want everybody to succeed, right? I don't yeah. want anyone to fail. I don't think you want anyone to fail. And, you know, and there should certainly be enough money for everyone to go around. And and there are people that hoard it. And there's that's the reason why there isn't, right? But regardless, yeah. um, tears of love, soul box, you're going to Japan tomorrow. Thank you so much for taking some time to chat with us. As I'm sure you're in a whirlwind and frenzy of activities. Yeah. I am so looking forward to you bringing the Soulbox Supper Club nationally, internationally, and uh, the expansion and the growth of what you are doing. Good luck with everything, your accelerators, your kids, <laughs> all, all good things to you. And thank you again for coming out and hanging out with us for a little bit today. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Okay, we'll talk soon. All right, thanks.